Ah, a fresh wipe. There's not much better than a fresh wipe in Escape from Tarkov. Why is that? Well, everyone's on an even playing field. Even the most hardcore player with thousands of hours in this game, they'll all be starting off with at most maybe level 3 armor, level 3 helmet, and an AK. That means even the brand new player can go head to head with the most experienced player. Every single piece of gear is valuable. Even if you're just going head to head with AI scav and taking all their gear, bringing it back to your stash, that's going to help you a whole lot in the fresh wipe. There's no better feeling than running for that extract, adrenaline pumping, just trying to finish that quest, extracting safely. This is 10 tips to start a wipe. First off, I would recommend upgrading your hideout med station to at least level 1. During the introduction quests for the therapist, you're going to need to turn in a whole bunch of Salewa kits. If you get really unlucky, which can happen, you could go a whole bunch of raids and not find a single one. So I would recommend just making them if you have the option. The cooldown, at least at the time of this video, is 22 minutes. You can go ahead and start the process of making a Salewa kit, do a raid, come back, and it will be ready for you. Now also, this item is just great to have, especially when you're questing. You can go ahead and put it in your secure container, and if you're all banged up and you're bleeding, you got a whole bunch of health loss, this will heal both of those. So instead of having bandages and an AI too, you could just put a Salewa kit in your container, and that's going to do the job of both the bandage and AI too. Next up, you're going to want to build a huge arsenal of weapons as well as armor. I personally like the AK-74N, AK-74M, the Vepr, that's the 7.62 version, and also the ADAR. These weapons handle great as they are early in the wipe. You can mod them quite easily, but they're going to be great stock as they are. So you can go ahead and loot them off of scavs. If you find any these weapons on scavs, save them, build up an arsenal of weapons. They're going to help you out in the long run, especially when you have those quests that are really difficult and you want to go in with a solid weapon. You're going to want to have that stash available in case it takes you a couple tries. Same deal for armor. Let's say you notice your scav has level 3 armor. Load up that scav and then make it your goal just to make it out of there alive so you can use it on your PMC. Now in that same vein, talking about armor, visors actually work in the early game. For instance, the Kiver helmet, it kind of becomes a joke late game, but it's actually pretty good at the beginning. It's going to cover your head, your ears, but most importantly, you can put a visor on it. Now the visor is actually going to work against bad ammo that people are using, PS ammo, shotgun ammo, things like that. So it can actually save your life, especially it will reduce that annoying one-shot scav that's going to randomly kill you. For instance, there we go, I let this guy shoot me in the face, survive it. Certainly I can't see very well, but here we go, a couple shots, he even has to reload. So early game, this can save you even just from that annoying scav that might have one-shot you from across the field. It's worth using the Kiver early game with a face shield. It is no secret that ammo is extremely important in this game. Two people could have the same gun, the guy with the better ammo wins. What I would recommend is anywhere you can find ammo that has BP, BS, BT. If you find some of that, keep it. Bring it back to your stash whenever you have important quests to do, bust it out and use it. Now, although I personally don't like to use my scav too often at the beginning of the wipe because you're not getting XP for your PMC. What I will do with my scav runs is try to find good ammo. What that means to me is going to reserve and just looking for good ammo for my PMC. Just take a quick look at all of this BT ammo I was able to get from one run at reserve. Now I'm going to take all that back, use it on my PMC, and now instead of maybe three shotting someone, it's going to be two shot. It's going to help in the long run and just make questing smoother. 
One of the traders I like to focus on is leveling Ragman to at least level 2. So at level 1, you got a level 3 helmet, but you pretty much just have pocket armor and not really a good backpack to choose from. Now once you hit level 2, it's going to open up a whole bunch of helmets as well as body armor. This 6B47 is excellent because it also covers your ears and you can wear contacts at the same time. You're also going to get access to this 6B23 chest armor. This is excellent for the price point. It's got high durability, so you can go ahead and take a couple shots from scavs or players and still have durability left to finish that quest. With these two items combined, you're going to increase your survivability. Some players even choose to use this all the way up to 40. It's honestly a solid choice. With all the looting you're going to be doing, even if you have the increased dash, you're going to be running low on space. I would definitely suggest saving for a lucky scav box. This is just going to make life so much easier. Throw all of your junk in there after you finish a raid, then you can sort it later. Even a late game, you're never going to get rid of that lucky scav junk box. So get it early. It is expensive, it's going to be a million plus but I would definitely recommend just going ahead, splurging, getting that. Now, if you're looking for another way to go broke, I would suggest getting a docks case. This is going to allow you to put all of your valuable keys in one place, and you can put that in your secure container. So that way, if you find a bunch of keys or you just want to do a loot run with your keys, you can bring them all, and you can also throw money in there as well as key cards. So it's just a great thing to have, and it's going to make your life a whole lot easier to have at least a docs case. Now, especially at the beginning of the wipe, you want to get out of customs as soon as possible. It's going to be an absolute war zone. So you might need to bring a couple friends with you if you can, just roll as a squad, get that machinery key, run it down, go to that truck, open it up, get that lucky pocket watch and get out of there. Now, I know, it's kind of fun having a war zone and customs, everyone's got the same gear, but it gets pretty tiresome when you get that lucky pocket watch and you're heading towards the extract and then some scav gets a lucky headshot on you. It's so rough at the very beginning. So what I recommend is just getting this all over with as soon as possible. Whatever you can do, just get it done, get out of customs, and head over to woods or head over to Shoreline, those quests are going to be a little bit easier on you. As you're doing your questing, you're going to be picking up random items, and I would definitely suggest to know what items you're going to need in the future and hold on to them. One of the surprisingly best ways to find all of these items that you're going to need in the future is to go around and pick up hidden stashes on customs and save all the items that you're going to need. You'd be actually very surprised at how many items for questing can be found in these hidden stashes. Now I'm not going to say waste all of your time and only do this over and over, but if you're just low on funds or you just want to do some farming, go ahead and check out these hidden stashes. Just for instance, on this hidden stash run I did, look at all of these questing items that I picked up. I got Healthcare Privacy, Bad Habit, Signal Part 2, Textile Part 1, Farming Part 4, General Wares. Hold on to all these things, you're going to need them in the future. Make sure not to forget they can do the majority of quests at night time as well. What I like about this is it takes all of the long range and snipers out of the equation. No one's really using night vision yet. So go ahead, put a flashlight on a handgun and then run around and do whatever questing you need to do. This is going to be just a safer thing in the long run, and it's kind of annoying going around and not seeing anything. But if you have a good mental image of the map already ahead of time, then you pretty much know where you're going to be running. If you can get some night vision, go ahead and use it. It's hugely powerful at the beginning of the wipe. Another thing to note, even at dusk and dawn, I do find to see less snipers. So, if that's something that you plan on doing, go ahead and do a dusk or dawn raid, and you might be a little bit safer, you're definitely going to have company, but maybe some less snipers on the map. 
On the final note, you should always have a farming route that you enjoy. A lot of times you're just going to get burnt out on questing, or maybe you're just going to go flat out broke. You decided to risk it all and do a fully geared run, then you lost it all. It happens to the best of us. So if you just need to make some money, find a farming route you like, do it over and over until you're at a good comfortable spot money wise. I personally like reserve. If you can find yourself a couple of keys, especially like a marked room key, you can make some serious money. Of course, in this clip, I have a whole bunch of keys from my level 40 character, but I just want to show you an example of what it's like to have a whole bunch of keys in a farming route you like. If you do end up losing all of your gear on a run, you're going to be comfortable with buying more gear because you're going to have a farm route you like and it's not going to be so bad. Alright guys, that's going to wrap things up. Good luck with the fresh wipe. If you found that helpful, I really appreciate you guys hitting that sub button, the like button, or leaving a comment. As always, have fun in Tarkov. Take it easy. Peace.